Hello, everyone. Welcome to Empower English Readers. We present the mythology story Eros and Psyche by Mina Morris. Once upon a time, there was a princess called Psyche. She was so pretty that no one else in the world could match her beauty. When she went out, people would come in big groups to see her. Children would throw flowers in front of her and give her pretty things to wear. They treated her like a goddess. Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, heard about this and felt jealous. She told her son, Eros, the god of love, to make Psyche fall in love with the most ugly and mean man in the world. This way, Psyche will pay for thinking she's so pretty, said Aphrodite, who was very proud of her own beauty. Eros was excited to see this very pretty girl, so he went to the palace of Psyche's dad. No one could see him. He went from room to room until he found Psyche sitting with her two sisters. They were all pretty, but. Psyche was much prettier. The moment Eros saw her, he fell in love with her. He decided to marry her. He made her dad think about asking an oracle what to do with Psyche. The king was worried that her beauty would make the gods angry. The king went secretly to the temple of Phoebus at Miletus, and there he asked the oracle. The oracle told him that Psyche had to be taken to a tall mountain and left there for a monster to eat. This was the only way to save the kingdom. The king felt very sad when he heard this. Psyche was his favorite daughter. He went home feeling very upset. Psyche saw him and asked, Dad, why are you so upset? For a long time, the king didn't tell her why he was worried, but she kept asking. Finally, he couldn't keep quiet anymore. He told her, Your beauty has made the gods angry. Even Aphrodite is jealous. The oracle at Miletus has told me that unless we do something, we and our city will be destroyed. Psyche asked him what they had to do. He said, You are the sacrifice, Psyche. Psyche was very scared when she heard that. But she asked her dad how the sacrifice would happen. He told her what the oracle had said, that she was to be taken to a tall mountain and left there for a monster to eat. Psyche cried a lot, but finally said, It's better for me to die than for everyone else to be destroyed. We should do what the oracle says. Not long after, Psyche was prepared. She was dressed like a bride with shiny clothes and jewelry. At the time, the oracle said, she was taken to the mountain and left alone. Nobody could stay with her or help her wait for the monster. As soon as Psyche was alone, Eros made her fall into a deep sleep. While she slept, he took her to a secret palace he had made for her. Around the palace were gardens with shiny temples, fountains, twisty paths, and trees with unusual and tasty fruits. The palace itself was very pretty. The walls were made of ivory and cedar, and the roof was of gold. The ceilings were bright blue with pretty stones like stars, and the posts holding it up were also gold, decorated with shapes of flowers, leaves, and birds. The floor was made of beautifully colored stones in unusual designs. Psyche woke up in this palace. She looked around, amazed. 
Suddenly, she heard the voices of girls she couldn't see. They spoke to her in a nice way and told her not to be scared. We are here to serve you, Psyche, they said. This palace, these gardens, and we who serve you are gifts from someone who loves you. He just wants you to be happy and to marry him. Psyche stopped feeling scared. She got up and walked around the gardens and the palace. She saw pretty things everywhere. She heard soft music and had a feast of unusual and tasty food and drinks. But she didn't see anyone. Everything was done for her by invisible hands. Psyche spent the day looking at the pretty things in the palace and garden. When night came and she felt tired, she laid down on a big, comfortable bed made for her. Then, in the dark, Psyche heard footsteps getting closer. She felt very scared. She thought it was the monster the gods were sending to destroy her. But a soft, sweet voice spoke to her from the dark. It told her not to be scared. I am your true love, Psyche, the voice said. I made this palace and these gardens for you. Just love me back and we will be so happy that not even the gods could be happier. Hearing this, Psyche felt very happy and full of love for the one who had prepared all this for her. He stayed with her all night, and they talked. But in the early morning, before it was light, he left. Psyche did not know what her mysterious lover looked like. All she knew was that he was wise, kind, and loving. Every day, Psyche enjoyed the gardens and the palace, had feasts, listened to sweet music, and was served by invisible hands. Every night, her secret lover came to her, but he always left before morning, so she never saw him. For a long time, Psyche was very happy, but after a while she started missing her dad and her sisters. She became sad and lonely. One night, she told her lover, Will I never see my dad or my sisters who I love so much? The secret asked her, Are you tired of me, Psyche? I'm not tired of you answered Psyche. But I miss my sisters. I want to know they are okay, and I want them to know I am okay too. If I could see them just once, I would be happy. Psyche's secret lover was quiet for a bit. Then he said, I love you so much, Psyche. I can't say no to you. I will bring your sisters here to see you, but they can only stay for three days. You must not tell them anything about me, no matter how much they ask. And if they give you advice, don't listen to it. Remember, if you don't listen to me, it will bring great sadness to both of us. Psyche was very happy thinking about seeing her sisters again. She quickly promised to listen to her lover's warning and to do as he said. But all night Eros, for he was the one she loved, was quiet and sad. He was worried that Psyche's wish would cause some bad luck for them. The next night, Eros made Psyche's sisters fall into a deep sleep. While they were sleeping, Zephyrus, who controls the winds, picked them up and carried them to a room in Psyche's palace. In the morning, when the sisters woke up, they were surprised to be in an unknown palace. They were even more surprised when Psyche came to greet them. They found out that the palace, the gardens, and everything in it were Psyche's, 
They were all gifts from a lover who had taken her there the day she was left on the mountain. Psyche asked them about their father and what had happened since she left. After she heard all their news, she took them around the palace and showed them all the valuable things. She took them through the gardens. They heard music and were served by invisible hands. The more they saw, the more surprised they were, and they became very jealous of Psyche. They asked her about the one who had given her all these things, but Psyche avoided these questions and didn't talk about her lover. After three days, when it was time for her sisters to leave, Psyche told them to choose what they wanted from all the things in the palace. She gave them lots of jewels and treasures. They asked for things and got them. Then they fell asleep, and Zephyrus carried them back to their father's castle. He also took the gifts that Psyche had given them. For a while, Psyche was happy. But then she started missing her sisters again. She asked Eros to bring them back like before. Psyche, don't ask me, said Eros. I feel that if they come again, something bad will surely happen to us. But Psyche kept asking him to bring her sisters until he agreed. Again he made the sisters fall into a deep sleep, and Zephyrus carried them to the palace where Psyche was waiting. But this time, the sisters were not as happy. They had become more and more jealous of Psyche while they were away. So now, they could barely hide their jealousy. They said to each other, Why should Psyche have all these things, and we have nothing except the gifts she decides to give us? Then they started talking to her about her husband. He must be some horrible creature, they said. Why else would he only come at night and never let you see him? He's probably the same monster you were left on the mountain for. Oh, Psyche, you are very unlucky to be married to such a creature. At first, Psyche tried not to listen to her sisters, but they kept talking and whispering. Eventually, she became scared and started to worry each night about her husband coming. She was afraid that he might be a monster and that he would eat her one day. Then, on the last night that her sisters were with her, just before they went to sleep, they called Psyche to their room. They gave her a lamp and a knife. Dear sister, we want to try to save you. They said. Here are a lamp and a knife. Tonight, when your husband is asleep, you must get up quietly and look at him with the lamp. Then, if he is a monster, as we think, use this knife to kill him. This way. You will save yourself, because if you don't do this, he will definitely hurt you some day. Psyche, shaking, took the lamp and the knife. She promised to hide them in the small room next to where she slept. She would use the knife as they told her to if their fears were true. Then she said goodbye to her sisters because she knew it was time for them to leave. That night... Eros came to Psyche as he usually did. She didn't let him know about the plan she and her sisters had made against him. He was so kind and loving that she couldn't help but love him. But then she remembered her sister's warnings and stopped herself from loving him. She waited until he fell asleep. Then she quietly got up and took the lamp in one hand and the knife in the other. She went back to him, held the lamp above him and looked at him. She was surprised and happy to find out that her husband was not a monster, but Eros, the god of love. While she was still looking at him, amazed by his beauty, a drop of hot oil from the lamp fell on his shoulder. 
Eros woke up and looked at her with sadness and anger. What have you done? He said. Oh, unhappy one, why didn't you listen to my warnings? Now I have to leave you, and you will have to suffer. Goodbye, unhappy Psyche. With these words, he disappeared. At the same time, the palace, the gardens, and everything else disappeared like morning mist. Psyche found herself alone on a large, empty plain. It was starting to get light, and a cold wind was blowing. Eros! 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 Psyche called, but no one answered. Then Psyche cried loudly from sadness. She got up, wrapped her clothes around her against the wind, and started walking across the plain. She walked for a long time, but she didn't know where she was going. Finally, she arrived at a forest and heard the sound of a flute. She followed the sound and found a place where the god Pan was playing his flute. Many creatures of the forest, big and small, had gathered around to listen to his music. Psyche called out to him in her sadness. O oh Pan, you who travel everywhere, tell me where Eros is so I can follow him and find him. But Pan replied, I don't know, Psyche. Ask Demeter, the mother of Earth. She is very wise. If he is on this earth, she will be able to tell you where to find him. So Psyche continued her journey and found Demeter, the kind mother of Earth. Demeter was watching the fields, the meadows, and the people working on the harvest. Psyche asked her, Oh, Demeter, you who know everything, tell me where my husband Eros has gone so I can follow him and find him. The mother of Earth answered, Psyche, he is not on Earth. When the hot oil burned him, he ran back to Olympus, the home of the gods, because his mother Aphrodite lives there. Now, he is with her because only she can heal the injury you gave him. Hearing this, Psyche cried even more and said, I will go to Aphrodite and tell her about my sadness and pain, and maybe she will let me talk to Eros and he will forgive me. But Demeter replied, Be careful, Psyche. Aphrodite hates you a lot, and she would be happy to destroy you if she could. Eros is also angry with you, and it's unlikely that he will forgive you, because you made him feel a lot of pain and sadness. Even so, said Psyche, I will go to Aphrodite. Because if Eros doesn't forgive me and love me again, I don't want to live. So Psyche kept traveling until she finally arrived at Olympus and where Aphrodite lived. When Aphrodite saw Psyche, she was happy because she thought, Now that Psyche has come to me, I can punish her as she deserves. However, she was surprised by Psyche's beauty. Then Psyche asked to talk to Eros, but Aphrodite replied harshly, Eros doesn't want to see you. You tricked and hurt him so much that he came to me for comfort. But I will give you a task to prove yourself. If you can do it, maybe I will talk to Eros about you and ask him to forgive you. But if you fail, you will belong to me, and I can do whatever I want with you. And Psyche replied, No task is too difficult for me if Eros can forgive me. So 
Aphrodite led her into a room where there was a big pile of different kinds of grains, such as barley, millet, wheat, poppy, beans, and many others. They were all mixed together, making it hard to tell one from another. Aphrodite then said, Your task is to separate these seeds. Each kind must be put into its own pile, and you must finish by the evening. After saying this, Aphrodite left her. When Psyche looked at the pile of grain, she realized that the task Aphrodite had given her was impossible. She was scared of what Aphrodite might do to her if she failed. Although Eros was still angry with Psyche, he didn't want his mother to be too mean to her. So he sent a large group of ants to help her. He sent thousands and thousands of ants, and they grabbed the grains and separated them. Psyche watched in amazement as the grains were magically sorted into different piles. When the task was finished, the ants left. In the evening, Aphrodite came back to the room where she left Psyche. She was sure that she would find the task unfinished and that Psyche would be at her mercy. But to her surprise and anger, she found the grain sorted into different piles, just as she had asked. And now will you ask Eros to forgive me? Psyche asked quietly. But Aphrodite replied, Wait until tomorrow. We can talk about it then. The next day, Aphrodite gave Psyche another task. She told her to go to the field where her sheep were and bring back a bag of their golden wool. Now Aphrodite's sheep were very dangerous and scary, so no one could go near them without getting hurt. Psyche knew this, but she thought, it's better to die at once than suffer from Aphrodite's anger. So, she took the bag that Aphrodite gave her and went to the pasture. On the way, she met Pan. He felt sorry for her because she was so beautiful and sad. Psyche, don't go near the pasture, he warned her. Wait until the evening when the sheep are resting. Then go into the woods, over there, and gather the wool you'll find in the bushes. The sheep rest there during the day, and their wool gets stuck on the thorns and branches. Psyche thanked him for his advice. She waited until the evening and then went into the woods. There, on the thorny branches, she found clumps of golden wool left behind by the sheep. Psyche gathered them until her bag was full. Then she quickly took it back to Aphrodite. When Aphrodite saw that Psyche had completed the task again, she was angry. But when Psyche asked her, Will you ask Eros to forgive me now? Aphrodite replied, Wait until tomorrow. Maybe he will want to see you himself. But the next day, Aphrodite gave Psyche a new task. She gave her a crystal jar and told her to fill it with water from the Fountain of Oblivion and bring it back. The Fountain of Oblivion flows from a deep crack in a rock on top of a high mountain, the rock is so steep that no human can climb it. The water flows down through a deep channel, and this channel is guarded by dragons that never sleep. Psyche took the jar and started her journey. As she traveled, she cried because she knew no one could go near the stream of oblivion and live due to the dragons guarding it. But once more... Eros felt sorry for her. He asked Zeus, the All-Father, to lend him his eagle. The eagle could take the jar, fill it at the fountain, and bring it back to Psyche. 
Zeus, the All-Father agreed. As Psyche was resting by the side of the road, the eagle flew down to her, grabbed the jar from her hand, and flew away with it. Now, Psyche thought she was truly lost. How could she go back to Aphrodite and tell her not only did she fail to fetch the water, but also the crystal jar was stolen from her? But while she stood there, unsure whether to go back or continue, she heard a loud flapping of wings, and the eagle returned to her. The jar was still in its claws, but now it was full of the dark and cold water she was sent for. Psyche was happy and took the jar from the eagle and quickly went back to Aphrodite. When Aphrodite saw that Psyche had done the task again, she was very angry. One more task, and only one more I will give you, said Aphrodite. Take this box and go to the underworld where Persephone is the queen. Ask her for some of her beauty and bring it back to me in this box. The feast of the gods is soon, and I want to use it to make myself look beautiful. Now Psyche truly thought she was lost, as no human had ever been to the underworld where Persephone was queen and came back to the world above. Feeling hopeless, she thought, I'd rather die now than suffer more from Aphrodite's anger. And she climbed to the top of a tall tower, planning to jump off and end her pain. But this tower was magical, and when she reached the top, a voice spoke to her and encouraged her. You can do what Aphrodite has asked and still live, said the voice. Just listen carefully and follow the instructions I'm about to give you, and you can get the beauty Aphrodite wants. The voice told her to go to the city of Achaea. Near this city was a mountain with a narrow, dark opening. This opening led to a path down to the underworld where Persephone was queen. Psyche had to follow this path. But take two coins in your mouth the voice said, and a piece of barley bread soaked in honey in each hand. You'll need these to safely reach Persephone's palace. The voice also warned her that along the path she'd meet an old man with a lame donkey carrying wood. He would beg for her help, but she should ignore him, as Aphrodite sent him to trick her into giving up the bread or money. She then reach the big black river Styx and meet the ferryman Sharon. He carries the souls of the dead across the river. After getting on the boat, she should let Sharon take one coin from her mouth as payment. As she crossed, a face would rise from the water begging for the other coin, but she should ignore it. This was another trap set by Aphrodite. After crossing the river, she'd see Persephone's palace. At the gate was Kerberos, the fierce three-headed dog guarding the palace. She should give him a piece of the bread without speaking, and then he'd let her pass. Inside, she'd meet Persephone. A feast would be offered and she'd be urged to eat, but she shouldn't eat or drink anything. Whoever eats or drinks in Persephone's palace can never leave. If she stayed strong and didn't eat, drink, or speak, Persephone would give her the beauty Aphrodite wanted in the box. On her way back, she should give the second piece of bread to Cerberus and the other coin to Sharon. But Psyche, don't open the box or look inside the voice warned, or your efforts will be wasted, and Aphrodite's anger will surely find you. Psyche listened until the voice stopped. She remembered everything it said. When it was quiet, 
she came down from the tower and went to the city of Achaia. The trip was long and difficult, but eventually she reached the city. There she got two coins and barley bread soaked in honey. She left for the mountain that was beyond the city. She found the opening the voice told her about and followed the path. It led her away from the sunny world above and towards the darker underworld where Persephone ruled. Not long after, she met the old man with the donkey, just as the voice had warned her. He seemed poor and sad and begged for help. Psyche felt sorry for him and wanted to give him bread or money. But she remembered the voice's warnings and passed him without saying anything. Soon, she reached the river and saw the boat and the dark boatman Sharon. She got into the boat and he took one coin from her mouth. Silently, he rowed her onto the river. Suddenly, a face came out of the water, and two hands reached out to her. To Psyche, it looked like her father's face. He begged her to give him the other coin so Sharon could also take him across. Psyche felt like she was going to cry to deny him, but again she remembered the voice's warning. She knew that the face and hands were just an illusion made by Aphrodite to trick her into giving up her money, preventing her from ever leaving the underworld. So she stayed silent, and the face and hands sank back into the water. Soon she reached the other side of the river and got out of the boat. She saw a palace more beautiful than any other she had seen, except the one where she had lived happily with Eros. <coughs> In front of the entrance was the three-headed dog Cerberus, looking very scary and barking loudly, which made Psyche shake with fear. Then she gave him one piece of honey, soaked bread, and immediately he was quiet and let her pass by him into the palace. Inside the palace, everything was stunning, but the most beautiful was Persephone. She welcomed Psyche, who was given soft cushions to rest on, and a grand feast was set before her. Psyche looked at it with desire. Eat, my child, said Persephone. You've had a long journey, and this food and drink will make you feel better. But Psyche said no. Finally, Persephone said, I know why you're here, to take some of my beauty back with you. Give me the box you brought. Feeling unsure, Psyche handed over the box. Persephone took it and left, but quickly came back and gave it back to Psyche. Take it, said Persephone. You did your task well and smartly. Now... Go back to Aphrodite and give her the box. It has the beauty she asked for. Without speaking, Psyche took the box and quickly left the castle. She returned the way she came. When Cerberus started barking loudly, she gave him the other piece of bread, and he stopped and let her pass safely. Soon, she reached the river again, and found Sharon waiting. She got into his boat, and he took the second coin from her and rowed her back to the other side. Psyche left him there and quickly followed the path that led to the bright and sunny world above. But she felt tired on the way and sat down to rest. Then she looked at the box she was carrying. She wanted more and more to see the beauty gift that Persephone had given to Aphrodite. Her curiosity became so strong it was like a burning fire, 
and she couldn't resist any more. She opened the box and looked inside. Suddenly, the beauty inside rose like a light fog and floated over Psyche's head. She fell into a deep sleep. Now, Aphrodite would have surely destroyed her while she was helpless if Eros hadn't come to save her. His wound was healed, his love for Psyche was back, and he had forgotten his pain and anger towards her. He went to where she was lying, picked her up, and took her to Zeus, who ruled high on Olympus. Eros asked Zeus to protect Psyche from his mother's anger and make her a goddess too, so she wouldn't be afraid of Aphrodite anymore. Zeus agreed, and he woke Psyche from her sleep and made her a goddess. All the other gods and goddesses welcomed her, and Aphrodite had to let go of her anger. It was Zeus's rule that all those living on high Olympus should be at peace. Then they prepared a grand wedding feast for Eros and Psyche. All the gods and goddesses came, ate, and drank. Eros then took his bride to a palace that Zeus had given them. It was even grander than the first palace where Eros had taken Psyche. They lived there in joy and happiness. But Psyche's two sisters got the punishment they deserved. Eros visited both of them in a dream and promised to marry them if they jumped off a tall cliff. Both of them believed their dreams. Each of them went to the cliff alone without the other knowing and jumped off. Ah! They both died horribly. Psyche lived happily with her husband Eros in the palace on High Olympus forever. Thank you for listening. See you in the next videos.